Hey, hey, boys, welcome to lesson five called Invaders Mastery. I was gonna say strategy, mastery, same shit. Anyway, it's actually a very, very important lesson because I'm telling you guys that invading is really broken if you know how to do it. Level one, level three, level five in this game, okay? I will be covering those things and I have clips of everything for you guys to understand, okay? I have <coughs> examples and things you have to do to recognize it. So, we're gonna start with Mr. Pick a Man. So, as you can see, my sheet. Um, Let's begin with level 1, if you have more range, I mean level 1, and with a cheese strategy, okay? Let's start with that, okay? So let's say <clears throat> you're the Jinx, Lulu, Nidalee side, and well, you know, you happen to have... Enemy happens to have like Kazis, Nidalee, Samira, Nautilus. Go invade. If you can invade enemy team, why would you not do it? Like, <clears throat> you just literally win a game by just invading. Of course, if, let's say, top lane is Fiora against Camille or something, you probably don't, but the moment one team has signed in the team, you can just leave top lane alone and play bot side. So it's super important to recognize. And one thing as well, by the way, it doesn't have to be on bot lane, by the way. It could be on top side as well. So let's say you have to have Nidalee and you have like a really broken champion. You've got a champion called Fiora. Enemy has, a, let's say, a dog champion, Maokai. Okay, boom. What you then can do is like, even, even if it is top side, okay, level one. So you don't only have the option of bot side invading, you have the options of top side invading. But here's the thing. The thing you have to keep in mind is that if you want to invade top side level 1, and he happens to start bot side, okay? Um, <clears throat> that is fine, but make sure you reclaim your bot side after, especially if this is the bully matchup. If it's a Nala, Samira, Jinx, Lulu, and let's say enemy Jungler star bot side, you want to make sure that after you invade his Raptor's Raptor, you make sure you take your bot side camps, okay? Don't just full clear top side and keep your bot side camps and don't do that. So make sure that you're gonna take his top side camps and then. Take his bullseye camps, your bullseye camps, okay? So, like, multiple ways to like think about level one. That's why, please, every single game you're playing, think about level one. Can you invade them top side? If you can't, can you invade bot side? If you can't, okay, then you can start playing normal, okay? So, <coughs> here are the things with conditions to fit enemy level one, which is war level one. If enemy does four camp in the buff, um, if you guys watched the previous video where I played Rek'Sai, right? Um, do you guys remember me playing Rek'Sai and... Oh fuck, my screen's a bit buggy, but... Uh, and I warned enemy Raptor level 1, I did Red, Raptor, Gromp, enemy did the full clear, he did 3 topsy camps, into the Raptor, into the Red buff, and I saw him and invade. So, you do this as well if you're winning jungle matchup, okay? So at that the game, at Rek'Sai winning jungle matchup, and at 1 pushing lane, which is my mid lane, right? And <clears throat> here's the thing that's super important, okay? So... The thing that I'm about to explain is that when you invade, right, I don't just invade. If you actually pay close attention, I ping my mid lane. Let's say I would invade this near, okay? And let's say my ball is pushing. I'm spam pinging this tower. And let's say I want mid lane to push as well. Let's say, I don't know, let's say this little bunks is my team, okay, whatever. Or like I have a mid lane mid lane. I would spam ping the enemy tower. And then I'm gonna ping on the way, on the way to the enemy drone right here. Like, that's like a super important thing you have to do. You don't just... Um, hold on a second. You don't just like invade. You actually want to ping your laners. And you then, <coughs> as you're invading, you're going to ping them assistant, assistant help. This is what you want to be doing, okay? So, I'll write it down as well. Um, if you invade <coughs> the enemy tower, after ping, where are you going? And lastly, ping assistance in your laners' faces. One, two, three. Oops, I cringed it. One, two, three. Boom. These are the things that are super important. Before I invade, I ping when I need to push. I ping where I'm going, and then I ping in their faces. This is the most clear way to, to ping, and that's literally what I do, by the way. And usually lanes are gonna come. So, there's multiple invade scenarios, okay? So imagine I'm invading here, okay? I mean, this game I'm not, but I'll just give you guys an example, okay? Let's say I'm invading here, and what happens is that enemy Zeri Sorak is like, oh fuck, what the fuck? Elise invading? Let's say they see me here, okay? Like, I think I just popped the plant soon. So right now, let's say the wards on me, they see me. And Zerdu Lu starts moving to me. Okay? As a jungler, you have to understand if enemy laners are moving to you, try to think what your job is as a jungler, okay? But if you 
like I don't know if you know if you're like high gender, you will know, but even if you're high gender, some people might not know. If enemy nations move to you, you want to make sure that you dance with them, which means that you want to play in a way where you can't get engaged while you make sure that the bullet is moving to you. That way your bullet is hard pushing the wave, and while they move to me, my bullet have the wave crashed, and the moment the wave crashed, they can start moving. There will be some games your laners will not move, even though it's really good for them to move. And if they're not moving, you have to play like that, which is by them pushing, you dancing with the enemy jungler, and then you wanna basically invade as your laners have to push, okay? So usually when jungler's invading and laners are not moving, like, why the fuck are they moving? But here's the thing, even in Challenger, people are not gonna move till they push the lane. And in some games, even if you ping the tower, they will not even push and come. They will just keep the wave there, deny them some CS. What do you as a jungler? Accept your losses and just peace out. Sometimes this will happen, okay? So, I hope you understand why is it important to do these steps, which is... Um, if you evade, ping enemy tower, which is them to push. So let's say enemy laners are dropping their wave, right? Now you understand, if laners are dropping their wave, your lanes will be able to move if you buy time, right? Ping where you're going because then they know why they have to push because well if you're invading usually laners push if they don't then they're unfortunate and then S of course let's say if enemies like laner dropping their wave just ping lanes in the face and make sure as you invade to always keep looking at the minimap okay <clears throat> this is so important so these are the rules for invading and pinging as well is a big part of invading okay remember that so even here buddy I mean this is not really regarding invading but here we saw listen okay what I'm doing is I spam ping with laners' faces. The whole time, care, care, care. I legit, I don't ping like here, care, listen. I ping in their faces. Literally. That's the best way to see it, you know, because laners are focused on these minions and they don't see shit, okay? So, here's the things about invading, okay? And I'll show you guys some competitive examples. So, <clears throat> okay, wait, let's do this game. Okay, so Sejuani took three camps in the top side, okay? Sejuani knows he wins 1v1, his mid priority. Perfect example. Okay, Santa now is probably gonna push the wave and try to involve himself, right? I mean, he should try to push the wave, you know? Because <clears throat> now this guy has to catch the wave, he's better conditions. So here's the thing As you invade, okay, one pushing laner, and enemy top laner has a push here, as you can see, okay? This Gwen can move first. As a jungler, you have to identify which laner of you can move first. So especially in early game, you always, always want to run through the lane that can move first. So let's say you're playing competitor, playing solo queue, and you'll be pinging your Kisanta in his face, come, 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 and let's say start hovering a bit. You always want to be running towards your mid lane, because that way, even if top lane is priority, he can't collapse on you. You can just run all the way to the bot side. And I call this concept, it's like, kind of like, I call it bulldoze. It means, let's say you're a truck driver, okay? Someone's trying to sandwich you. Before you get sandwiched, you're making sure that you bulldoze like one side completely. And this guy will never be able to collapse. This is the fundament fundamental of like having one pushing lane. So that lane you can run to and you'll be fine. Okay? If you invade. So here, um, <clears throat> he decided to do the blue buff, I think, right? He decided to do the blue buff. He's like, wait, it's taking a bit too long. I'm not going to keep waiting. But imagine that he started to fight him here, okay? And Kisante started hovering. Even if Gwen's collapsing, let's say this guy's winning, you can always run towards the mid lane and it'll be a 2v2. So you always need to know your exit plan when you invade, okay? That's like very important. Very often, um, people invade usually this side, right? Look at my screen, like this side. So what you can do is like, if you're mid priority, your exit plan should be there. If your bullet has a push and they forced the enemy on the tower, right? Your exit plan should be bull lane. Even if enemy lane is priority, it's useless. As long as you run through lane as priority, and of course your lane has to move to you as well, buddy. If they don't run to you, well, they can always do what Sejuani is doing. Which is that this guy will not reach the Sejuani at usually level 3, laners are not strong enough to one shot. Like, no matter what laner this is, it's not gonna one shot the jungler usually. If the enemy jungler can't hit as well. So, <clears throat> this is called the bulldoze concept. Like, you can call it whatever you want, but. So once you have like the pushing lane and winning Joe matchup, run to the lane that has Pryo, bulldoze that lane. Okay? And the most important thing is that you do what I pinged previously. 
If you invade, ping enemy tower. After you ping, where you're going, ping assistance in your laners' faces, okay? So, this is like level 1 level 3, okay? I'll show you guys level six, level 5 example. So, in a lot of games, okay, if you're ahead, what you really want to be doing is that you want to look at, okay, what they're playing for, that's number 1, of course. Um, it's like right now 6 minutes, and usually around the 7 minute mark, or like 6, 6.50ish, Red buff starts spawning, right? Or blue buff. I just, I'm just gonna show you guys real quick. I start blue buff here, okay? So if you look at the timer, it's at 6 minutes. My blue buff spawns in 40 seconds. So that means that my blue buff spawns around 6.50, okay? Around 6.50, 7 minutes, depends on what enemy pathing is. Enemy red buff or blue buff will usually be up. So if you're ahead, okay? And you're winning. And you let's say have a winning laner. In this case, I'm pretty sure my top can push and my middling can push, okay? You can plan and invade one minute in advance. So, if you're ahead, okay, around usually the six minute mark. So, I'll write it down. Six minute mark. Think about invading enemy camp. And you can win the game of this, by the way. So, here, I know that's six minute mark, and I know that my move is spawning 40 seconds. Like, right here, I already recognized. Um, Usually, my indicator is always like one minute before my buff spawns. So, one minute is long enough for you to take your caps and base usually. So, you see, one minute is my buff spawning. So, just take Gromp, I run towards Raptor, and then a base. You see? So, what I try to say is here is that I was planning to invade his red buff here. I knew that if my buff spawns in 10 seconds and he starts topside, very likely his red buff will be spawning very soon as well. So I planned at minute 6 or 5.40 or something, usually one minute in advance, okay, all my laners are fine, what I'm gonna do is clear my camps, base, spend as much gold as I can, because you wanna fight enemy on red buff, and fight him. So I already made a plan, okay, Drake up, both craps up, I don't care, I'm just gonna run to the top side camps here. Okay, that's a sneeze. So right here, look, my blue buff is up, but guess what? I'm going for the enemy red buff. Because I know his red buff will spawn very soon. And here, what I'm doing here, I hope I pinged, I hope I followed my own instructions. I hope I pinged at enemy mid lane tower and enemy top lane tower. And then I pinged on the way to the enemy drone camps. Okay, I did ping on the way, okay. As you can see, you see this ping on top lane? I pinged, okay, I first ping, I invade. And then I pinged, hit the fucking tower. And I think I didn't care about mid lane that much. I just cared about the top lane, so I didn't pick mid lane. And mid lane can't push anyway. So here I pinged, push on top lane, and I'm invading. You see? And as I'm invading, uh, here I'm pinging again. So imagine Rams for some reason is laning, okay? And he moves me first. What I would do is I would dance, just back off a bit, wait till my Jax has the push. If he has the push, and then starts moving, I can start fighting. If enemies move first, I would play slow and wait till he has the push. That's what I'm thinking. So, I mean, I just put a pink one here and... So, of course, me while I'm doing Red Buff right, I know that if Lisa is not here, he can only cross map. So, I'm just pinging bold lane, care, care, care. These things, ideally, it would be good if you can do it. But first, focus on just invading part. Do your own part. Don't focus on the for now. Once you're really good at all these things, you can ping as well your other side to be careful. If you can do it, nice. If you can't, you don't have to force yourself to. <laughs> And here base I'm doing red buff. Right? So me taking red buff here, and I took his golems as well. But he just took the drake, but he lost his wall topside. And buddy, let's say he wasn't doing the drake, okay? He was on topside here. I would actually kill him as well. So if a top lane push to move to me, I would start fighting him. And one thing is all super important is that as the herald is spawning around 8 minutes and it takes red buff, usually junglers don't hit level 6 by the way. If you deny the red buff. <laughs> around herald timing. This game I have a lot of kills and level 6 as well, and he took the Drake, but usually if you deny the Herald at one camp, enemy is like close to level 6, but barely not. So, especially if you're winning and you can take any red buff around 7 minutes, that's so fucking good. It forced him to have no camps on top side, and forced him to go bot side, and Herald's free for you. So that's like something I always want to do. So quick recap. At like 1 minute before, so you can look at your own blue, if your blue is spawning 130, you feel like you're winning. You know, you can play for, like at 1 minute ideally, okay? Like 115. 
Think about, okay, my blue spawns 115, means enemy buff spawns 115 as well. I'll evade him because I'm winning. And then you make a plan around it. You take your camps, you base, buy really good items, and then evade him, and then follow the steps, which is. I hope you guys can say it without me saying. What's the steps? I know I can't answer to you guys, but the steps are ping tower, ping invade, ping in their faces. Okay, these three things. Ping where you're going, ping to fucking push, and then ping in their faces, ideally, okay? Especially if you feel like you really need them, okay? So, I'll be showing you guys a competitive example. So, pa -pa -pa, Mr. Penis playing Kindred. So, pay attention, okay? Um, <clears throat> So he's on the blue right now, he knew as well the Maokai timer, so after he takes the boss set here, okay? Actually, let's go like before, okay? Okay, so it's 6 minutes. Kindred took his full top set caps. But 6 six minutes, do you guys know it's a pattern? 6 minutes, basing, thinking about evade. Anyway, so he goes to a boss set here, he takes a drake. And as he takes a drake, he takes a boss set, right? He's like, oh, enemy red buff spawning soon. So here he's like, okay, I'm winning. Kindred wins against Maokai. He's going for an invade. I can guarantee you that he's telling his bot lane, hey, try to push if you can, mid lane, hey, try to involve yourself if you can. And try to move base, right? Uh, I'm not sure if they saw Maokai or not, but anyway, you guys get the idea. Like, Kindred invades his camp. And by taking that camp, Maokai usually doesn't hit level 6. And that's in general what you want to be doing. Making one plan before. Make sure your laners are pushing. If they're not pushing and they're not moving, adapt. Instead of coping and being like, oh, I didn't come, that's why I died. You can always make the best out of it. That's sort of cute. People are going to run things. You might be right. Doesn't matter if you die. It doesn't matter. Okay? So, <clears throat> basically, these are the conditions of invading and how to use ping. So, hopefully, you learn level one. Oh, the cheese trade. I didn't tell you guys about yet. Okay. Okay. I forgot almost, really important. Okay, okay. Imagine you're playing Red Sider, okay? And enemy, let's say, has a melee champs. And you have melee champs as well, okay? And let's say top lane is tank against tank. It's the most boring shit matchup ever, okay? And you're not that strong. But let's say it's a bit 50-50. At 120, you can start walking from here. And just jump, take this plant and go on the blue buff. If they're hitting it, they probably use their builds on the blue buff, so you'll win. If they didn't hit it, you can split the map. And you can basically kill them. Or like, uh, basically, take more farm. And force enemy drone to be on the top side. But before you invade here, of course, you should ask your top laner to put a ward at the top side entrance. You, as you invade, you should put a ward here. Or like, you can even put like, after you do wolves, put it here. But one thing, if you invade level 1 and you're not here, don't use your smite. Just take the blue without smite, because maybe they don't even know you cheesed. So that way you have smite, and if enemy does raptors, sorry, red raptors, wolves, you can maybe smite this, or just red into wolves, at least you have smite, right? So, this is a cheesy pathing that you can do as well, which is late invade here. And this pathing is, this late invade is so good. In low elo especially, if they start boss set because they want the dish. You can surprise so many people, because not many people are going to cover here, till 120. And you will be able to get kills, okay? But after this lesson, hopefully you guys learned how to invade. Level 1, level 3, level 5. And in mid-game, always take enemy camps instead of yours. Um, usually I have 3 nodes. That I have for you guys, but this one specifically, like, it's a lot of things, and you need these conditions and written down. Um, I will as well put this on the Patreon and YouTube subscriptions, or whatever it is, you know. And I was gonna make sure that you guys have this information and always replicate every single game. If you're, let's say, playing champs like Needly, Elise, like Kindred, whatever those champs are, that you can actually invade really good, okay. Anyway, um, I'll see you guys in lesson 6, it's regarding waves, um, and I'll go in detail about that and how to abuse the enemy team, and it's like going to be a banger video, I can tell you guys that already. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to simplify it for now, I like this, but you guys get the idea. Anyway, peace boys.